happy is grief. As the chariot carrying Lord Krishna and Balram departed from Vrindavan, the gopis followed it. All of Vrindavan mourned Lord Krishna's departure, but the gopis' grief was unbearable. Some of them felt so miserable that they cried out, "We prefer death to life without him." How could Lord Krishna leave us and go to Mathura? cried a gopi. Another lamented, "Evil demon king Kansa is so vile. What if he destroys our beloved Lord Krishna?" Life came to a standstill in Vrindavan. The cowherds too felt the pain of separation. Besides, the people, even the birds and the animals of Vrindavan, fell into a mournful silence, for they grieved the separation from Lord Krishna. Among them all, Radha's sorrow was the deepest, for she was Lord Krishna's most beloved friend and mate. Meanwhile, Lord Krishna headed to Mathura with a firm resolve to destroy Kansa. Akrura witnesses a vision. Akrura drove the chariot towards Mathura as fast as he could. However, midway he stopped the chariot at the banks of River Yamuna to refresh himself. While he was taking a bath, Akrura saw both Balram and Krishna standing in the water. Confused, Akrura looked back at the chariot and saw that the two boys were sitting in the chariot. When he dived into the water, he saw another wonderful vision. Akrura saw a beautiful vision of Krishna. in the form of lord vishnu sleeping on sheshnag after a few seconds the curved body of sheshnag turned into the stunning form of balram akrura was awestruck and overwhelmed with devotion what i had heard is true lord vishnu and sheshnag were born on earth as the sons of vasudeva he said to himself as he joined his hands and prayed to lord vishnu the vision disappeared and akrura went back to his chariot overjoyed with what he had seen lord krishna heals kabja when the two brothers arrived in mathura akrura went to the palace while lord krishna and balram roamed the city on foot they met a garland seller who knew at once that they were divine he worshiped them with flowers and lord krishna blessed him further on the brothers met a young woman named kubja She was beautiful though she had a hump on her back her long hair and pretty eyes were marred by the hump she was carrying sandalwood paste whom is the paste for asked lord krishna when kubja told him it was for kansa he told her to anoint balram and himself with the paste instead after she had done so he removed the hump from her back kubja looked extremely beautiful now because her hump was gone She thanked him happily. Lord Krishna and Balram proceeded to Kansa's palace. It had become dark when they reached it. Chanura and Mushtika are slain. Meanwhile, Kansa was performing the yajna in the arena in the palace. A bow was to be worshipped there. Lord Krishna and Balram entered the arena and Lord Krishna broke the bow in a challenge to evil Kansa. Angry Kansa thundered. kill him at once charuna and mushtika heard him and attacked the brothers at the same time kubalaya pida the mighty elephant was also released into the arena lord krishna and balram killed kubalaya pida first they took the elephant's tusk and hurled it on the floor of the arena all night the two wrestlers fought the brothers but there stood no chance against lord vishnu himself Lord Krishna grabbed Chanura's body and spun it a hundred times before dashing it to the ground and killing him. Balram destroyed Mushtika in a single blow. Kansa realized that even the most carefully laid evil plans would not be successful. Kansa is killed. Lord Krishna and Balram now approached evil Kansa, the demon king, as he sat away from the arena in his palace. Kansa saw them and fearfully ordered his guards tie both the brothers in iron chains and put them in prison the prophecy that lord krishna would kill the monstrous and ruthless demon king was about to come true before anyone could move a muscle lord krishna jumped off the arena and caught hold of kansa by the hair then he hurled kansa who fell senseless to the ground due to the impact as everyone watched or struck kansa breathed his last at lord krishna's feet 
Kansa's brother Sumali tried to kill Lord Krishna. Balram destroyed Sumali in a trice. With this, the reign of Demon King Kansa came to an end in Mathura. All of the Mathura rejoiced at the death of the Demon King. Lord Krishna met his parents Vasudeva and Devaki. Nanda and Yashoda also came to Mathura to join in the celebrations. Krishna in Gurukul. After Lord Krishna had killed Kansa, he made his grandfather Agrasena the king of Mathura. Then Lord Krishna and Balram went through a sacred thread ceremony called Yajna Pavitra. Earlier, all students lived and learnt in Gurukul. So Lord Krishna and Balram too left for the Gurukul of Sage Sandipani, who lived in Kashi. Lord Krishna and Balram had killed many demons and earned universal fame. Even then, they followed their guru's commands obediently and humbly. They went to the forest every day and brought firewood. They helped Guru Mata, Sage Sandipani's wife, cook food in the ashram. Sage Sandipani was pleased with their humility, modesty, and intelligence. Lord Krishna and Balram read spiritual Vedas like Yig. Yajur, Sam, and Atharva, the Upanishads and worldly knowledge like Kalp, Jyotisha or Astrology, and Vyakarna or Grammar. They also became proficient in archery, politics, and 64 arts in 64 days. They memorized everything so fast, thought Sage Sandipani astonished at their fast progress and development. Krishna and Puffed Rice Sudama, the son of poor Brahmin, studied in Sage Sandipani's Gurukul along with Lord Krishna and Balram. Over time, Lord Krishna and Sudama became inseparable friends. One day, Guru Mata, wife of Sage Sandipani, asked Lord Krishna and Sudama to bring some wood from the forest. While they were collecting wood, dark clouds spread in the sky and it started raining heavily. Lord Krishna and Sudama took shelter on the branches of a huge tree, but it did not stop raining for a very long time. Sudama, I am feeling very hungry, Krishna complained, but Sudama, who was on the branch above him, did not answer, for he was busy eating the puff rice that Guru Mata had packed for them both. When Krishna climbed up the branch and caught Sudama eating red-handed, he said jokingly, Sudama, you owe me this puffed rice. You will give it to me later. Soon, it stopped raining and they both went back, forgetting the incident. Guru Dakshina In earlier days, there was a practice called Guru Dakshina. After completing their education, students would make a token offering of gratitude to their Guru. This offering was called Guru Dakshina. When the education was over, Lord Krishna and Balram went to Sage Sandipani. Standing humbly with bowed heads, they asked, Gurudev, it is time for us to return home. Kindly tell us what we may offer to you as Guru Dakshina. Sage Sandipani said, Krishna and Balram, it was my good fortune to be a Guru to the ideal students like you. You are all-knowing and all-powerful. Your divine attributes are known the world over. By associating with you, all my material desires have vanished. But I have a longing for my son who died many years ago. He had been playing on the beach and somehow he was drowned. I want you to resurrect him and bring him back to me. Thus, Lord Krishna and Balram set out to fulfill their Guru's desire. Krishna's Conscience As per Sage Sandipani's request, Lord Krishna and Balram went to bring his son back. They went to the ocean shores of Prabhasa and ordered the god of ocean to give back Sage Sandipani's son. The ocean replied, The boy is not in my grip. He was taken away by demon Shankar. He has a holy corn shell named Panchajanya and he lives inside it. Lord Krishna entered the ocean and killed Shankasur, but he did not find the boy there. So he took the corn shell and went to Yamapura, the kingdom of Yamraja. When Krishna blew the conch, Yamraj welcomed him. When he ordered the boy's return, Yamraj returned seed Sandipani's son. Once he was brought back to life, Krishna and Balram handed the boy over to their Guru Santipani. From that day onwards, Lord Krishna carried the conch shell with him. He even blew conch shell, Panchajanya, along with Arjun's conch shell, Devdatta, signaling the start of the war of the Mahabharata. Krishna and Jarasandha 
Jarasandha was a very powerful demon. He defeated many kings and made promise their allegiance to him. Making him the supreme emperor, he had given both his daughters in marriage to King Kansa of Mathura. After Lord Krishna had killed Kansa, his two wives went back to their father Jarasandha and lied. Father, Krishna killed Kansa by unfair means and we will not be satisfied until the death of our husband is avenged. So Jarasandha vowed to destroy Krishna to avenge his son-in-law's death. He raised a huge army of demons from all over the world to help him conquer Mathura. Jarasandha decided to teach Krishna and his clan Yadavas a lesson. Since Yadavas lived in and around Mathura, he decided to battle with them and destroy the race forever. Jarasandha then repeatedly attacked Mathura and each time he caused massive death and destruction. But Krishna and Balram killed everyone except Jarasandha. Jarasandha's aim Jarasandha attacked Mathura 17 times with his demon army. Lord Krishna killed his entire army every time but avoided killing Jarasandha. Lord Krishna said, Jarasandha is such an influential demon that he is bringing demons right to Mathura instead of me having to travel all over the world to kill them. The 17 attacks that Jarasandha led on Mathura had drained the energy of the Yadvas and stunted the growth of the city. The economy had come down and the wars had emptied the treasury. One day, Krishna received disturbing news that Jarasandha had forged an alliance with several other kings to destroy the Yadava clan forever. Balram said, Krishna, Jarasandha is a powerful enemy with a huge army and the Yadvas have barely managed to withstand his attacks with even the likes of you and me on their side. Jarasandha's alliance had only one aim, destroy Mathura and the Yadava clan. Jarasandha's army Jarasandha had entered into an armed alliance with Emperor Damgosha of Chedi, Dantavakra of Karusa, Rukmi of Vidarbha and brothers Vind and Anuvinda of Avanti. When the alliance began its march towards Mathura, the Yadvas were helpless. The alliance decided to attack Mathura from several fronts simultaneously. Jarasandha then sent a message to the Yadvas, Your clan would be spared if you handed over the heads of Krishna and Balram to me. The Yadvas refused and readied themselves for a war. Lord Krishna was the only person who repeatedly cautioned his clansmen against the war. He then hit upon the idea of shifting the capital from Mathura to Dwarka. Krishna placed the suggestion before his grandfather, King Ugrasena. He said, Krishna, if you run away from the battlefield, you will forever be known as a Ranchhor or the one who has run away from a battlefield. Lord Krishna smiled at this. Krishna's Suggestion Lord Krishna did not worry about being called a Ranchhor. He said to his grandfather, I already have many names and one more does not make any difference. I am willing to sacrifice my reputation for saving my people and their lives. But Balram wanted to fight Jarasandha. Lord Krishna gently reminded him, War is not the way to solve all the problems. The confederacy of kings against Mathura is so great that it could lead to the death of countless people. He added, Why should my people suffer because of me? The best solution would be to leave the city and go to a new place where it would be difficult for Jarasandha to attack us. He reminded Balram that Jarasandha had already attacked Mathura 17 times and he would not rest till he succeeded in his mission of finishing the Yadava clan. Everyone reluctantly accepted Lord Krishna's suggestion. The City of Dwarka King Ugrasena wondered how a new city could be built in such a short span of time. When the citizens of Mathura were sleeping, Lord Krishna called for Vishwakarma, the architect of the demigods, and told him to build the beautiful city of Dwarka within the sea. The architect showed Krishna and King Ugrasena the plan for the new city, saying, My lord, the city will be built only if Samudra Deva, the god of the sea, gives us some land. Thus Lord Krishna worshipped Samudra Deva, who was pleased, pleased and gave them land. Soon, Vishwakarma built Dwarka, the city in gold. Lord Krishna said to Balram, This city with a fortified fort surrounded by the ocean will protect my people while we deal with the demons. Then Lord Krishna transported everyone to Dwarka. 
When they woke up in the morning, they were living in a beautiful city in the middle of the ocean. Ranchor, a demon king, Kalyavana, wanted to avenge his father, Garga Muni's insult and destroy the Yadva clan. So he joined hands with Jarasandha to destroy Mathura. They planned to attack from the east and the west simultaneously. However, when they reached Mathura, an empty city awaited them. An enraged Jarasandha destroyed Mathura and called Krishna Aranchod, run meaning war and chod meaning run away. Just then Lord Krishna came to meet Kalyavana in his Vishnu form. When Kalyavana saw Lord Krishna, he remembered the description narrated by Narad. He had said, Lord Krishna is like the rising moon and very beautiful to look at. He is dark in complexion, clad in yellow silk, garments with the Shivatsa mark on his bosom and Kostuba money sparkling in the neck. He has four arms, lotus-like eyes, dazzling alligator-shaped earrings and a charming smile on his face. Immediately, Kalyavana started chasing Lord Krishna, who quickly ran away towards a distant mountain cave. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.